Good morning. Welcome to another service of worship of Blackstone Presbyterian Church, where all are welcome, serving Southside Virginia since 1824, doing ministry and service, and that continues almost 200 years later. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your hearts to the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the technology which allows us to reach out to each other, to worship with each other, even in this time of pandemic. Fill our hearts with your grace that we may know true communion, not only with all the saints around the world, but all the saints who have gone before and all the saints yet to be born into this greatest of all possible worlds, into your sweet creation. These things we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Rather, we confess our sins to God and to each other, confident that God hears us, God knows us, and God in Jesus Christ will forgive us. Let us pray together a prayer of silent confession. The mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Know that you are forgiven and think, speak, and act accordingly. Since God has forgiven us in Jesus Christ, so we take every opportunity to forgive each other. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with me. Let us pray together as a community of faith. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the opportunity to serve you, to go about our ordinary work, even in extraordinary times. Help us to be about the business of your kingdom, bringing blessing to all those who are sick in mind, body, or spirit, all those who face all manner of difficulty, particularly those victims of violence and oppression and racism. Help us to be your blessing to all those who lack good food, good water, good jobs, good health care, good education. Help us to always be mindful and focused on those who do not have enough of the good things of this world especially since we have perhaps more than enough of all that is needful to sustain and support a good life in this good creation. Be with all those who are victims of violence and oppression and racism. May our hands and our voices be the first to call out for justice, to call out for righteousness, and to help those who need a hand. Be with the leaders of our community, of our state, of our nation, of our world. Help our leaders to make decisions that are in accord with your will, decisions that are life-giving and never death-dealing. 
be with all those in uniform in this nation and around the world. May they serve with humility. May their leaders care for the lives of all the folks under their care and command. Be with all those who give their lives to the service of others. Almighty God, you have given us the task of bringing your blessing to the whole world. May we remain steadfast and resolved and firm in our work. May we find grace and joy each day in our work. In the name of Jesus Christ, who was born for us, who lived for us, who died for us, who rose again for us, who reigns in power over us, who prays for us and taught us how to pray for each other. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have only one scripture reading this morning, but it's a, a long one. It's about a quarter of uh, Paul's letter to the Philippians. And uh, in Bible study this week, uh, we had some juicy texts to look at, uh, but this one was particularly intriguing. Uh, before that Bible study began, I didn't know which of the texts I was going to preach from, uh, but afterwards uh, I got so deeply into Philippians, I just sort of you know, spent the uh, entire rest of the week uh, reading the entire letter, uh, reading uh, Fred Craddock's uh, marvelous uh, commentary in the interpretation series, and I think I can do a better job of presenting uh, Philippians to you than I did Wednesday night. Let us hope that is the case. Paul's letter to the Philippians uh, reveals a relationship that is uh, perhaps closer and more congenial than his relationship with any other congregation. Um, we know the Philippians uh, sent money to Paul in contrast with other places like Corinthians where, where Paul refused to take a single denarius from the Corinthians because they were uh, confused in their minds about the proper uh, use of their money and he didn't want to add to that confusion. But the uh, Philippians have evidently been supporting him as he has gone off and about to other churches to help them uh, begin uh, this, this uh, extraordinary uh, experiment uh, in following Jesus Christ. Paul is in prison, as he writes. He may be facing torture and death. And his thoughts uh, uh, are about this. He, he longs to be with the Philippians. He feels close to them. But uh, he may not be able to be with them in the future, uh, at least not in his body. Certainly in spirit, he is with them and uh, he has quite a few things to say to them. Let's hear a few of them. I'm reading from uh, the first chapter, verse 27, to the second chapter, verse 18. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, 
This is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing. For God has graciously granted you the privilege, not only of believing in Jesus Christ, but of suffering with him as well. Since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, Regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and arguing, so that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, in which you shine like stars in the world. It is by your holding fast to the word of life that I can boast on the day of Christ that I did not run in vain, or labor in vain. But even if I am being poured out as a libation over the sacrifice and the offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. And in the same way, you must also be glad and rejoice with me. Did you catch how often uh, Paul says to be of one mind, be of one mind, work with the same mind. That doesn't mean uh, to agree with each other about everything, certainly not. Uh, but it does agree, it does uh, emphasize that we all are turning and directing our energy and our focus uh, in the same direction uh, to the love of Christ that we are called to bear into the world, uh, the grace of God, the proclamation of the gospel, to let these things be our, our principal emphasis in our daily lives and in our uh, interactions with other people. Be of the same mind. Whatever your opinions, whatever your, uh, your political uh, persuasion, uh, Love must be at the center. Be of the same mind. Paul never is afraid of telling people when they're getting things wrong and maybe even scolding them for it. And uh, toward the end of the letter, he even uh, uh, brings in his pet peeve of, of circumcision. He can't, can't let it alone. But it is remarkable uh, how much he commends the Philippians for the work they are currently doing. And there are maybe more than hints there that 
Although Paul is suffering, certainly, Paul is sacrificing uh, for the sake of the gospel and may soon meet his uh, death for the sake of the gospel. The Philippians, too, are facing opposition. They are facing opponents who are, are probably anti-Semitic. And remember that uh, Christianity is, is very much a, uh, a product of Judaism and springs out of that tradition. So if there's a anti-Semitism going around at this point in history, uh, the Christians are, are experiencing it as well. And uh, there is a, a good chance that uh, not only uh, uh, political harassment uh, and public harassment is occurring, but there may very well be uh, uh, people in the Philippian congregation who will be facing martyrdom uh, in the near future. Uh, these are people having a, a difficult time proclaiming the gospel, and yet they continue so to do. How are they to do this? Paul suggests that they be good citizens, that they show by example uh, that they are worthy, uh, the word he uses, that they are, are participating uh, fully in daily life. They are not hiding or skulking. Uh, they are showing uh, just day to day that they are responsible and uh, uh, helpful members of the city uh, and, and by their actions refute any uh, accusations against them that they are up to some nefarious practices or something. He praises them for their generosity, uh, their generosity not only of purse but of spirit. He, he supports them in all that they're doing. Uh, he suggests that they do more than simply be of one mind uh, because of the opposition that they face, but to be of one mind in grace. This grace, Paul suggests, uh, is something special, that they are wrapped in grace even as they suffer and even as he suffers, that to suffer for the sake of the gospel is to be drawn closer to the sufferings of Jesus Christ, to be drawn closer to Jesus himself. And although it seems uh, counterintuitive to suffer and even to die for Christ, to Paul is a mark of favor. It is a mark that you have been singled out to, uh, to be especially important part of Christ's love and saving grace in the world. This uh, passage we've read also includes uh, one of the earliest hymns uh, that we know of, uh, probably known and used uh, throughout other congregations uh, in the Mediterranean. And it uh, talks about the uh, uh, Jesus Christ being present from before all things, and then he is present in history, and then he will be present uh, from now on, uh, Jesus Christ first and last, even before the first and after the last. Uh, the central uh, assertion of the hymn is that Jesus is Lord. So, if we serve our Lord, even uh, to and beyond the point of death, my, what good servants we must be. Paul is not the first preacher to, uh, to bring in uh, hymns uh, to make a theological point. Uh, he brings in everything he can. He brings in uh, athletic uh, metaphors. Uh, he talks about the, the, the fight uh, between uh, the, these creatures of light against the opposition uh, in the same way that you'd speak of a gladiatorial contest. Uh, he talks about running the race. Uh, he's using the images that are familiar to folks from their daily lives. The suffering that the Philippians uh, were undergoing 
uh, the suffering of Paul, uh, that's not a kind of suffering that feels immediate for us uh, in our culture, in our community, in our nation. Uh, we, none of us, are going to be put to the sword uh, for being Christians. Unlike the Philippians, who were a very small minority, uh, we Christians are part not only of a dominant religion, but a religion that is kind of embedded in the culture. So we're safe in that way. Nevertheless, we still do suffer with the trials and tribulations of life. So many of us are facing particular challenges in uh, 2020, aside from the pandemic, the ravages of age, the, uh, the misfortune of ill health, uh, family members who are, who are worrying us, who whose activities uh, keep us awake at night. We suffer. And we come to the pandemic when we have not only, uh, you know, our community uh, suffering, but a whole nation suffering through the ravages of a pandemic that does not uh, distinguish uh, between black or white or gay or straight or liberal or conservative or democratic or republican uh, uh, just as you know there there are no such distinctions in christ so there are no such distinctions with the pandemic and we are suffering we are isolated we are worried we have uh, uncertain future, uncertain plans ahead of us. This is naturally unsettling. And uh, you, there's really no need to rehearse the ways in which we suffer because we're all sharing them together and we all have a particular spin on it. Um, it is suffering. How are we to, to suffer together? for as long as the suffering lasts, and bear witness to Christ Jesus. Maybe this passage offers us this clue, that when we suffer in this world, we remain servants of the living God, servants of the Master, slaves of the Master, servants of the Lord, and our suffering may become a vehicle for the gospel to be proclaimed and shared. When we meet the conditions imposed upon us by the pandemic, if we do so with grace and with patience, with fortitude, with proper respect for the proper authorities, for trustworthy authorities, when we do all these things, we are making a statement. We are saying that we Christians are not trying to undermine uh, decent and orderly uh, life together, but we are trying to uphold it by doing the best we can. And if we suffer, and if we suffer in this way, we do participate in a significant and real way in the sufferings of Christ, in the sufferings of Paul, in the sufferings of all who have given their lives for the proclamation of the gospel. I take issue with those who feel that uh, Christians should somehow be exempt from the rules that govern everybody else, to make ourselves out to be a special case that is selfish and that is no proclamation of the gospel. If we undergo the same conditions as everyone else with humility, with never a harsh word or a word spoken in anger against someone who may disagree with us, that is a witness to the Jesus Christ that you and I know. As I read the whole letter uh, of Paul to the uh, Philippians, uh, I got the, uh, the idea of, 
wouldn't it be fun you know, once a year to, to write an epistle uh, from Richard to the Blackstonians? And maybe I will toward the end of the year. Uh, but uh, maybe the reason I started thinking in that direction is because I'd like to say to you uh, some of the same things that Paul is saying to the Philippians. Uh, he is not doing much in the way of scolding them for, for not getting things right. He's thanking them for all the things that they are getting right. And I'm still so new uh, to this call and to you. I'm still getting to know you. And I'm very aware that I'm, I'm just starting out on uh, that journey of acquaintance. But I am struck by the way you have continued to support the work and ministry and life of the church uh, with your generous financial contributions. Uh, we are not uh, worried unduly, uh, and we are even uh, uh, spending a good bit of money to upgrade the HVAC system uh, to increase the ventilation. Uh, and this is something I think that will uh, reap rewards for years to come when this pandemic is over and we're preparing for the next one. But just by that simple act, we are uh, signifying in, in, in significant ways that we are committed to the future of Blackstone Presbyterian Church in this community. We are showing faith and confidence that there will still be good work for those that come after us to do. Uh, and by our action, we are uh, making sure that there may be a few more of us to do that work than, than uh, would otherwise be the case. Uh, I continue to, to thank God uh, for all the kindness uh, and care you have shown me, but more importantly, for the kindness and care that you are showing each other. Uh, staying in touch by phone, uh, delivering goodie bags, it seems like such a small thing, but, but people have been uh, so thankful and just so delighted uh, by that brief interaction, by collecting toys for Christmas, by preparing uh, uh, food for Thanksgiving, uh, by all the ordinary activities of the church. Uh, you continue to uphold and inspire each other and I think to uphold and inspire this community. Certainly, you have upheld and inspired me this day, for which I give due thanks and praise. Amen. I'm gonna live so God can use me every way I'm gonna I'm gonna live so God can use me anywhere anytime I'm gonna live so God can me anywhere, anytime. I'm gonna work so God can use me anywhere, anytime. I'm gonna work so God can use me anywhere, anytime. I'm going to play so God can use me anywhere, anytime. I'm going to play so God can use me anywhere, anytime. I'm going to pray so God can use me Anytime I'm gonna pray so God can use me anywhere, anytime. And the version I usually sing, uh, 
has a verse that goes, I'm gonna sing. So God can use me anywhere, anytime. I'm gonna sing. So God can use me anywhere, anytime. But sadly, one of the conditions of our current situation, I'm not going to sing. So God can use me anywhere, anytime. I'm not going to sing. And God will use me anyway, anywhere, anytime. I'm going to stay home. So God can use me anywhere, anytime. I'm going to stay home. So God can use me anywhere, anytime. Oh, I'm going to live. So God can use me everywhere, every time. I'm going to live so God can use me everywhere, every time. Let us pray. Dear Lord, use us like you used the Apostle Paul, like you used the Philippians, like you used our parents and our grandparents and our great-grandparents, like you will use our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren for generations to come. Use us, O oh Lord. May we share in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ in good times, and in bad times. At all times, may we be of one mind that we are together, your children, living in your good creation that you have prepared for us and help us to care for each other the way that you care for all of us. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.